Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TIF Crossroads. It's been a couple weeks since the last show, but we are finally kicking off the eight, the Actions Tag Classic. In the first match, we've got the Usos on the other side. But right here in front of us, we got the Decepticons. Well, it most certainly is, and you mentioned that we haven't been here in a month. It certainly has been some time, but, you know, I think the TIF locker room has just been getting hungrier and hungrier. I've heard that the Usos have been training day and night to, you know, rekindle what was once lost. Now the Usos back together, bonded together as brothers, as twins, are here to do battle. They are. This is their first match since AWF Dark of the Moon, where they faced off against the Learning Tree, Karam and Choco, who actually got the win that day. Those two young gentlemen over from the AWF, I believe, might be are in this very tournament. And... Who knows if the Usos will meet them at some point. They have to first face out and defeat Indian Savage. And Agent Fox of the Decepticons rolling over. Big right hand coming. And here we're underway on TIF Crossroads. Smith, K, talk strategy for both of these teams. You see one side of more brute uh, leaning squad and the other, well, they're brothers. Oh, dear. Well, if you're, if you're the Usos, you know, going to this match, you got to use your agility you gotta use your experience to take advantage of what is still a relatively in, inexperienced Decepticon side even though they've been together for a full year you can't match over a decade at this point so it's you know the Usos they have an opportunity here and you know especially in a tag classic like this one wow, and this kind of group stage tournament uh, you want to get points wherever you can get them because you only got one shot at it we only got it. one yeah. shot. No true words have been spoken. And Did not miss a chance to blow the opportunity. Oh my God. Once in a lifetime. What a hell of a over. Here we go. Cover. That could be one, it right there. Two. Ooh, a side suit. I don't know what type of fucking suplex that was. That was some shit, is what that was. You know, leaping DDT. Excuse my French. Hooks the leg. One. And there, Savage with the right hands. And you know, going for Jay. The Decepticons, Agent Fox, Indian Savage are not, you know, twin brothers or anything like that. They're not even brothers or, or related in that sense. Oh. oh, and you know, Indian Savage just over the top rope. These two guys remind me of some of the glory tag teams in, in the, the, the old Japan days, of the Steiners, of Stan Hansen. And Bruiser Brody. I mean, they're they're Smash Mouse Bruisers. Yes, the tag. Oh! I mean, I'll I'll will stop you on one thing. I don't know if Stan Hansen will ever showed off some athleticism like that. Oh, you're you're definitely road. right. It's a bit it's a bit of that <laughs> old Texas brawling with an edge, and you see right there, Indian Savage towering over Jimmy Uso. And he certainly is living it up, living up to the moniker, fellas. And here in big right hand, getting into the and ring, the, grabs up. It's interesting enough, you know, the, the Usos, they can be savages in their own right. I mean, they're related to the wild Samoans, for crying out loud. Now look at the agility of savages. No! Oh my God! What? Got caught where the sun don't shine. No, kick out. Out of the ring, 
Indian uh, Agent Fox within the corner. Tag team wrestling chance in the crowd. You just know that's, that's the whole point of this tournament. And and so, Smith, I'm interested. If you if you think any of these two teams have the capacity of the Decepticons, the Usos, to, to be the winners of this tag classic we have going on in the Island Federation. Nice neck breaker by Indian Savage. Uh, yeah, I think, honestly, both of them, and I know it's, that sounds like a bit of a cop answer, but when you got the experience of the Usos matched with just the raw power and ability of the Decepticons, really either of them can take it in the long run. But, you know, we'll see. This is the very beginning, and hopefully we had a lot of fun wrestling to come. Hopefully. And you, you talk about the experience of the Usos, but, I mean, you also talk about the dissension of the Usos. Jay has been finding his stride as a singles competitor. But I don't I don't sense that same dissension, Smith, A, and the Decepticons. I think they're more of a well-oiled unit. And now tag. Box in the ring, the off the ropes. Also, oh! Yeah, like to your point, here there. Uh, you got a team like the Decepticons. They've kind of ran the chaos tag scene for about a year now. Obviously, on a show like that, that's so well, chaotic, for lack of a better term. Uh, you know, it's just that sort of thing, kind of battle. You just They're just battle test at the end of the day. So that'll definitely help them out in a tournament like this. Oh, they certainly are, and they're not going to pull their punches, as you can see. Oh, my God. Savage. That might be it. Might be. Ooh. Oh, wow. And Big kick out from Jay. Savage Sorry, Jimmy. I mean, I, I, I truly did. That super kick, I mean, you could see almost Jimmy Uso's tooth fly in the front row. And a spear from Jimmy to Agent Fox. He's down. And now one half of the Uso's finding themselves where they don't want to be in the jaws of two hungry, savage, bestial Decepticons. One of the Decepticons, they're just simply down and out. They're not getting up there. Whoa! They're not down for long. And I Uso think he just gamble. gave himself a concussion. Oh, look at this. Is is he about... Was Indian Savage about to throw Agent Fox into Jimmy Uso? These guys have no regard for their own bodies. <clears throat> How about to throw him back in the ring, Kay? They're right here. Yeah. Well, I don't I know. I mean, I've seen crazy things in wrestling. It seemed to I me that he would just throw him in the ring. Uh, that I'm just being, being real with Well, that. I mean, I don't know. I guess speculation is something that's very real when you're dealing with the Decepticons. You never know what they're thinking. In the hell, oh, I the know <laughs> Jimmy is thinking Indian Savage, he is going to go for a choke slam on Jay. Does he know his man's is getting Bronx West? Flash! One! Two! Yo, he just left his partner to... I won't say die, but... It was an interesting decision, just taking a frog splash, not letting them break up the pin. I guess he would just well, trust them to break kick out. From what I've seen, the Decepticons are a hive mind. Leaving DDT in the ring. Hooks the leg on Jimmy Uso. We operate on a single Jay. line sort of mission. One, two. Oh, Whoa. you're talking about a high Whoa. low. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. Jay, Jay Uso Fellas. Just, he, he walked in the ring and stepped out. He had a chance to break up the pin. Fellas, I mentioned the dissension. I mentioned the betrayal. Lest we not forget, it seems like Jay didn't either. That might have been a lesson taught to his brother, his older brother, just by a few minutes. But nevertheless, the Usos are now behind in this tag classic. The Decepticons gained points here in the opening match of the Island Two Federation points. Crossroads. Two points go to the winners of the Decepticons. The Usos now sit at the, well, technically still at the bottom of the Group C with zero. But that's a real, it's a big one for the Decepticons. They can basically quench their spot in the semifinals with just a win. Another win. Zero is not the number you want, Agent Smith. Not at all. And, well, ladies and gentlemen, we do thank you for watching this CIF Crossroads sponsored by from Real News by Actions Entertainment. We have more on and up <coughs> next. We have the debut 
of the megastar Logan Paul. I say that with Are we are we are we really sticking with Megastar for, for him? Talk about an oxymoron. Listen, K Smith, that's what the card says. That's what his people have in front of us, all the the, 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 the note cards. I'm just doing my job. And the the for the reigning booze for Logan Paul, who is I believe I don't I believe this may be is one of his first and only few times back in Japan for the first time ever since a, a, an incident that he wears around like a jackass still, because that's what he, he is. Japan, He's a jackass. I'm sorry. Actually, are we in the? I'm looking at these papers that they got in front of us. Uh, who who's he facing? Tina? Do we know? <laughs> oh 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 oh. So yeah, new guy, new guy, new guy. To to his. To his request, you know, he wants someone new of the TIF. He says, oh, you, you know, he said, any, okay, send somebody. I hope whoever the hell they send, they send someone good to bust him one because he shouldn't right. even be here. For and who's going to be the lucky oh man? God. Whoa. Oh, my God. Goodness, God almighty, K. Smith. Oh, he's going to, uh, oh, oof. That's I would say let's I pray th- for Logan Paul, but he deserves whatever is about to come for him. I'm going to assume that someone using his music because if it is, if it isn't, if it, oh, it's not. Oh, my oh, God, it's not. Oh, shit, it's not. <laughs> Paul Bearer holding he the holds, urn. He holds the urn. The subject the core of the power from the demon of death valley the undertaker making his way down the aisle here on crossroads and fellas he doesn't look too happy that Logan Paul is standing in his ring I'm he's back I you know the undertaker on TIF television for the first time, wrestling in a ring for the first time since August 31st, backlash on the AWF and when it, when it was AWF versus TIF, and now crossing over the realms here with a with a vengeance. He left that night scorned, and now Logan Paul is going to feel. Every bit of pain, every bit of agony, negativity, and hate that The Undertaker has thought since then. Two months is a lot of time to muster thought, to train, and that's a punchable ass face if I've ever seen one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be honest with you, I'd say uh, get re- get your uh, next match card ready. I don't oh, think this one's going to last that long. Well, yeah. And... Fellas, like it or not, the Maverick is doing what he needs to do, escaping the much taller, much stronger, much experienced, much more experienced Undertaker and couldn't do it for long. Straight jab to the forehead. And, fellas, prepare for this. A back suplex. You should do that five, maybe ten, perhaps fifteen times more. And here. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, my God. That's He's going to kill him. That's not there. You know, I don't like the guy, but... Ladies and gentlemen, those floors, that's basically a wooden floor, and he's getting his head spiked on. Don't tell me he's going back in the ring. Oh, he went back into the ring. For all intents and purposes, eh, I don't think the Undertaker is too concerned on who he likes or does not like. This is to prove a point and a message. Holy cow! Oh, he's fighting back. One. He is fighting back. you got to respect that. Pulled off a hell of a frog splash. And the damn. picturesque cross body that Logan Paul just hit and then Head oh. but Oh my god. Man. The Undertaker. Cool and unusual Taking up the infamous Logan Paul. Tombstone. Like the jaws of Good. a great white. Undertaker One, just swept him up. Two. Logan he kicked Paul out. perhaps wow. is too stupid. He's Did actually he kicking kick out. out he kicked, he's kicked, he kicked out. But he didn't, he didn't get far. He didn't get far. And he's 
Oh god. Oh, he just called it off. He just got knocked the fuck <laughs> out. Whatever was left the of that off. Whatever was left of that incredibly tiny braid of his is gone. Oh my god. <laughs> Good on the production cut truck were cutting away before a man's skull CTE and later the Undertaker is here in T I S. That is a warning shot. If I'm Roman Reigns holding my world title, damn it, damn it. All I'm saying is, I better hope the bloodline is competent this time around. And here, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see Dakota Kai, Bianca Belair, and. Rhea Ripley in triple threat action. And out burst in this match. You got Dakota Kai. Really a big opportunity here based off of against Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley to really make a make an impact, get yourself right back into that women's title scene. But that remains to be seen, you know. Two incredibly powerful women she's going up against tonight. Most certainly so when Dakota Kai, maybe a lady that's getting lost, may not lost in the sauce of the of the TIF, but I think people are under, key, uh, every time she walks out here, you know she's being underestimated and she cannot stand to feel that. She is ready to lay belt to ass to anybody that walks their way out. And Bianca Belair, well, she's the first one to, I mean, I might be the first one to get the print. B Bianca Belair, the EST of TIF. She's everything you want in a high caliber athlete, folks. She's strong, she's fast, she's intelligent, she's explosive. But for Dakota Kai, Dakota Kai is surgical. I mean, fellas, we all know that. She is m inclined to the martial arts. The way she uses those kicks in the ring is something to behold. And Bianca Belair, and this is not this is not my words, so I want to preface it with that, but Kai has said in the past that Biel with Belair is full of herself. She believes that because Belair has skyrocketed to the top of the women's division here in TIF, that she doesn't think she has any vulnerabilities, and Kai's job is to prove to Belair that she does. Well, my lord almighty. Very strong you know, words. Drama is stirring up in a TIF locker room. But when is it never in a wrestling landscape? And here, ladies and gentlemen, Making her TIF debut, the Eradicator, Rhea frickin' Ripley. Who, honestly, so surprises here because she showed up at the goddamn show. And Ripley looking to be in more high spirits than she usually is. Usually she's the, the brooding, hulking brute type, but might be excited to be here in Japan to perform in front of all these, these people here in TIF. I mean, compared to compared to like Midwestern U.S., I would probably be happy to be in Japan too. You know, well, then I mean that that is a shot. That is the shot. When Agent Smith never known to hold back his opinions here at this commentary table. Look, I'm being serious. Would you rather be in Tokyo or Des Moines, Iowa? You know. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The big clothesline stops Kai Ripley out of the ring. Single leg <laughs> takedown, and I think. A lot of people, if this is, if there, if there were parlays that, that the Americans, you know, those, those folks do, they play some in their sports. A lot of people would have placed their bets on Bianca Belair. And there's the right hands, the clubs, oh man, and a whining, hellacious. But. Oh my God. <coughs> Bianca Belair giving Rhea, Rhea a warm welcome to. to TIF Ripley spent most of her summer on the AWF side of the tracks, clearing that roster, and has got bored of being over there. Finally showing up where perhaps she can get some better competition. And Dakota Kai lineup 
Bianca, four on it. Well, one of those kicks C slide out the way. Had her Ooh, lined really up. The KOD. Went for the kiss of death, couldn't get it. The Ripley now, a little bit of teamwork, it seems, from High and Ripley. Blair is just yeah, back up to the juggernaut, right. kiss of death, and Ripley escapes yet again into a neck breaker. Get on Ripley. Out of the ring goes Kai. Thought it was going to be Ripley that time, but no. Sliding out. Ripley is in hot pursuit. Bianca Belair. It's an apple in her possession getting launched to Dakota Kai. <laughs> Riptide. Riptide. First of TIF's very own. One. Go to the over now. Two. No, not for three. Roxanne Perez, wonder how she's monitoring this matchup. Because you got three ladies that have a. Oh man. Oh. And look at that. Swiping the eyes of both Kai and. Oh, and, and Bella at the same time. And same so Ripley. Oh my god. <laughs> being an asshole with that apple. And, up and look at this shoulders. M military press by Belair. And she sends Ripley crashing down to the mat with the moonsault to finish off the art piece. Off the ropes. Now we've seen this before. Five rope Practor. Behind the back, caught her. It's an apropos name. And Ripley not getting her fair share of action. Electric chair position. Face first <laughs> into the mat goes Kai. Hooks the leg. One. Two, kick out. Belair, back up, stacks up on Ripley. One, flip up and over. One, no. Still going. Referee couldn't even get the counts to start. Women trading pins. They could have been a pinfall right there. Had Dakota Kai. I mean, I mean, she might have just seen it with her own very eyes. That's how fast this match is going. Table set up in the corner. Dakota Kai. <clears throat> to the corner. I've, I'm wondering what Belair, what, what her plans are with that table, honestly. I was going to find out in money momentarily as Ripley walks over. And again, Kai is the black sheep of this match. What the hell is wrong with her? Talk about bringing the AWF here. Blair now looks like she was trying to get Ripley into the corner, but the shot to the back now, no way. A rip tie for Belair. Oh, uh, it looked like a rip tie. Might have caught it too soon, and the flaming table goes out. It looks like Belair. Mind games, mind games. Bianca Belair used to use the power of magic to make that fire go out of that table. It well, she is the e e e e Might be the magic is. I'm not sure that's a. Adjective. I don't think that's a word. Well, listen, you don't pay me to be a dictionary now, do you? I don't pay you at all. One. That's a good point. Two. Oh! Hi. Blink and you'll miss it. She got the roll up. And I think I'm calling the shots here tonight. I think I'm calling the yards here tonight, folks. Because Dakota Kai, who I think a lot of people underestimated going to this matchup, found a way to snivel, to weasel her way into a win. Perfect, perfect strategy, I think, by Kai there to outsmart both former women's world champions. Green as Kai gets exactly what she wants, perhaps a title, or uh, uh, gets closer to a shot at Roxanne Perez, who has held that women's world heavyweight championship for a little while now. And, well, here we see the Diamond Taker in the TIF, along with L.A. Brodus facing up against Bobby Lashley and Carmelo Hayes. This is the return of L.A. Brodus to professional wrestling. He has not wrestled a match 
since April. Had his career sidelined and taken out by Tip Tastic, the guy that holds the World Heavyweight Championship over in the AWF. He's over there, and L.A. Brodus is over here. He gets to have a new slate, a new start here with the new cabinet in CIF. First match of Group D here in the Action Tag Classic. Uh, the other team in Group D alongside New Cabinet and uh, and Mello and Bobby Lashley is none other than Damian Priest and Cactus Jack, an odd couple who is awaiting both of these teams on the side of this match. But tonight... We have this matchup, and honestly, I don't know what to think of this match. You have L.A. Broadus making his first appearance in a wrestling ring in nearly seven months. And on the other side, you have a tag team that's never wrestled with each other before. So really, anything anything can happen in this one. I wouldn't put anything past this. <laughs> You're right. I mean, we also have a former world champion from this very company in the ring in Diamond Taker and him. And Ellie Brodus, they they worked on AW of Chaos as as far as I'm aware. They know how to work as a tag team unit. Hayes and Lashley. I mean, you talk about Priest and Cactus Jack being an odd couple. I think the personalities of those two could really clash. I mean, Hayes, we know, is very braggadocious, and you see it right there. He comes out with the Hollywood sign. And <laughs> Looks like Lashley might be playing to Hayes' strengths here, trying to get in the heads of Diamond Chick and LA Bros. But nevertheless, this should be interesting. I mean, all these four men are phenomenal within the ring. I mean, I mean, you, you kind of have to be to be in the action tag classics, man. And we saw one AWF team in the Decepticons get the win, moving up in their bracket. Will the same be said for TI for now with Diamond Taker and LA Brodus, who you get said? do have the tag experience together. Di Di L.A. Brodus, I'm just going to say it, you know, him and Diamond Taker, they, they, them as a unit, they, they have never wrestled this specific type, you know, within the tag ropes. You know, they're like a, a they're, they're like a Dudley boys, they're a Hardy boys, or in a sense, they're used to the hardcore stuff, but here between the ropes, it's different. And lastly, Bell sounds Lashley going, oh my days, almighty. Diamond Taker, I wish you luck. Kick the Lamute section. He's in there. He is still fighting. Diamond Taker is still a man who has evolved as a professional wrestler. Bobby Lashley floats over, hooks the leg. One. I say that since Diamond Taker. There's a time where a lot of people in the, in the wrestling scene never thought they would say he was a world champion, but Bobby is trying to make sure that was his last world championship, or if any world championship of that in here. Hayes, winner of these of the tournament, will face the oh, and a pile driver. What the hell is wrong with him? And winner hey. of this tournament gets a AWF tag team title match against well whoever holds it right now. It's Red Who is it over there in that insane sham symbolic oh, company God. that holds those black titles right now? Lashley goes in ringside. Well, current holders of the Actions World Tag Titles are the Bread Killers, CM Loaf, and other former TIF <laughs> champ Mamba Ant. Into the ring goes Diamond Taker Lashley, annoyed yeah, after I'm that. I'll bet money that uh, those two are not that yet. Time this tournament ends. Oh wow! Look at Mello. Jumped <laughs> and look over at Diamond the spear. Taker. Diamond Taker jumped over the spear. Choke slam. He's caught between two great whites. Lashley. He, he's no. Oh! oh spear. From the Almighty. That might. Like oh. a freight train. Fly right at you. And Diamond Taker rifling that shoulder up. You know, you talk about Diamond Taker evolved as a competitor. And A, I would attest to the fact that Diamond Taker has also evolved as a human being. I mean, he, a lot of people have been saying, a lot of crit criticism has been thrown his way. 
that the money from that big money contract Anthony Kingsley offered him changed him as a person. I mean, he was asked to exclusively wrestle what? on AWF, a Monday AWF. Another spear. Being the champion of our company. I mean, that's that's an egregious deal Diamond Taker made the best out of. Yeah, so he, you know, I, I, I strongly dislike Mellow it. Goes. Big frog splash. Folks, the leg, LA spills it up. It's something I, I strongly don't agree with. But you know, at some you know, point, you think he might have to tag in his partner here. He he's might not get the to, opportunity. He's trying to, but Lashley making sure that's not the case. These two are a that done deal. One, do two. LA Brodus didn't even get in the ring. Carmelo Hayes, Bobby Lashley, two points now for this. This I had a couple tag team, as Smith once put it. You see it right there. Jump shot. Carmelo Hayes headed with a finch to see Bobby Lashley celebrating it in the middle of the ring. And these two are going to gain points here in the Axis Tag Classic. For Diamond Taker, LA Brodus, they need to catch up. They need to find that resolve within them. Big match with Priest and, and Cactus Shack coming up for is, both of these teams. Easiest paycheck LA Brodus has ever gotten. Uh, <clears throat> Cactus Jack didn't even break a these sweat are two names I never want to see a cross with me on any card. <laughs> so good luck to these two. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Especially when they need points. CIF up next. Coming on up is the anomaly Deuce, who is host holding an open challenge to anybody in the CIF again saying, hey look. Any of you folks, please, 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 send your best, because he wants to break a sweat. He wants to truly see if he can be pushed. You know, this guy walks around like he's the greatest in the world. Spoiler alert, he's not. He's damn sure not. He's a phenomenal athlete, but he is not the greatest in the world. Damn it, he's not even the world champion of the company. But ask him, in this company, is his. You're looking at the anomaly, Deuce. And you know the even crazier part about that? We haven't heard a word from this man since he won that title ne months. nearly two months ago. He hasn't talked about his role in the Survivor Series that in the Survivor Series War Games match. He hasn't said a word to anybody. Yet here he is. Every week. And for us. I mean, his role in that War Games match, I mean, it did dividends. It got TIF the win. But this is an AW superstar with our Intercontinental Championship, and he's he's holding it hostage, quite frankly. Well, I, I mean, to be quite honest, who's to say he's even an AW superstar at this point? How do we know he's not, how do we know he's not completely switched allegiances to join TIF full time? We don't have evidence to the contrary. Well, his contract went up, uh, just expired last week. He didn't re-up it. He's still holding our belt, so... Uh, and, well... No clue. Listen, I, I believe there's certain things no that are becoming... Is. But, uh, oh, oh well, feeling it in my chest. Ace Carter! Oh, my! Wrestling excellence <laughs> has come... Fourth to TIF Crossroads. Yeah, we've heard in for the for a couple of weeks that this guy was kind of in the back, conversing with the higher ups, trying to get that contract signed, and now here he is in TIF, one of the more talented guys now on the roster, and he comes out to challenge Deuce. Big opportunity could become a title holder in his first match. No. We'll see what he has in store. I'm sure Deuce would not be a sure be appreciative of that. You know, he, he is from he's familiar with Ace Carter from the indie scenes. I mean, I mentioned that you know, so Ace Carter had a bit have a untelevised match over on Unchained against the Diamond Taker. I mentioned how he and he he is very familiar with a lot of the wrestling personalities you see on Actions Entertainment Television. 
and, and he's just one of those things where you take a picture and look out through the history of time is a potential. If you look close enough, you'll see Ace Carter. Well, now Ace Carter's going to be front and center of this picture against Deuce. He's going to look him in the eyes, and he's going to say, that title is mine. Or is the anomaly going to say, yeah, that's about what I thought. Jack shit. Here's the bell. And we're underway. Right. And it seems that you two gentlemen are more up to date on this Ace Carter fellow than me as you see a Koji clutch by Koji Carter. Koji clutch right out the gate. Press of submission maneuver. You, you know, he, I mean, we see it right here. He's, he certainly is athletic. But Deuce, man, Deuce is a, a, a brutal competitor. I mean, we saw what he did to Tamatonga around about a month or two ago in the moments leading up to the War Games match. He snapped his arm, guys. I mean, to do that in the ring to a man who, who you know has oh. to provide, who you know this is his, his living, to snap his arm with that malice speaks volumes to the kind of man that Deuce has become. I mean, for, for what I'm hearing, Deuce was this he, he wasn't always like this. Ace Carter... He definitely wasn't always like this, but this version of Deuce, one, two, almost retained the title, is the, is the version of him we've become accustomed to, quite frankly, the version of the Deuce that the TIF masses do like. And Lockeru might not, but the people of Japan love the anomaly. <laughs> they love the, 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 the tenacity he brings to the game. And look at these again. The anomaly is not trying to play this. Uh, not trying to have the long game happen. He wanted this damn open challenge, and I believe Ace Carter might have him running scared. Carter sweeps the legs. Big clothesline. Oh, a nice clothesline. And dude. here we go. Boom. Dude's whipped into the corner. Oh. Carter flips out of the way. Cat-like agility and a round kick. To the temple, Carter yeah, with the springboard oh. tries to splash. You can't make mistakes like that against this. You cannot. The anomaly. Right Two steps Boston ahead, Crab. and now Boston Crab slowing down the momentum. Lifts him up. Ace Carter. So coming into a full court press, guys. Deuce is a playmaker. He's a coach. He's a player coach. Out of the ring, sends him. Here on TIF Crossroads, Intercontinental Championship on the line. The anomaly holds it. Ace Carter here. Oh man, he was gonna go high. Deuce goes low. He ducked out the way. Russian leg sweep. Russian leg sweep. God save the British madman. We have a British madman right dead center in the ring, getting his leg cooked right now. And, you know, speaking of British Madman, I am sure that he is a member of the Ages of Chaos. Last time I checked, Deuce also infamously once the leader of the Ages of Chaos. Koji clutched oh by Carter God. again. I wonder, yes. I wonder what the anomaly thinks of how Juice has taken over things over there at, at, at AWA. I honestly am intrigued about his opinions of what's been going on while he has <laughs> been away. You mean how Juice has been a... A, a, a better fighting champion than did than this some bitch. Oh, okay. Oh, Deuce. Well, I'm 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 not gonna point fingers and say who's been doing what's what. But well, if you're not gonna do that and call it right down the middle. Then shut the fuck up. And oh, X Factor. And that's just that's just right down the middle. That's right down the middle, K. That's right down the middle. You gotta call it right down the middle because Deuce. Oh, at least Juice. Knows how to lead a faction. Juice isn't going to abandon crew, abandon ship when his folks need him most. You know, and, and at least J and Y. Think about this, J. Think about this, K. J and Y is Ace Carter's late the hell out. Deuce is going to break the count. J and Y, if, we haven't seen his face since that damn War Games match. But at very least, he fought to the end of the match. He waited for the bell to ring before he jumped ship. Deuce doesn't have the ball bearings to do that. What's to say, come push, come shove, he won't do the same to us. He's going to sell us out to the highest bidder. The second he gets the chance, he's going to catch another elbow drop. Ace Carter. Don't get up. Don't get up. 
Don't get up. You're not going to like what happens oh, next. Goodness. Look oh, goodness. Look away. God. Look away. Baltimore screwdriver. That will probably do it. What? Oh, wow. He, wait. wait no. I don't think he kicked out. He didn't. I don't think he the kicked Kyle out. Kyle one more for one more time. What the hell is wrong with oh. him? He just wants to inflict damage at this point. Goes up. Yeah. Catches oh, him. Oh, ankle lock. Oh, my God. Ankle lock. Oh, my God. Is he about to tag him, tag him out with an ankle lock? He's getting damn close. Ace Carter trying to crawl to the ropes. Deuce wrenching on it. Ace Carter in agonizing pain. He just lets it go. Grabs him into a snap suplex. Deuce thought he would have had the, end of the match won by now. Ace Carter is Pay taking attention it. to how the anomaly has taken over this matchup. Ace Carter was rocking and rolling in the opening moments of this, but Deuce. In the second half, he's been slowing win. down the pace. He's been making Ace Carter feel every suplex, feel every strike, every submission hold you think, Kate, into the corner now. It's too late for Carter to get that momentum back. Oh, swing, miss. Ducks. Speaking of momentum. Dear Lord, Carter getting those ropes. Him. Look at him go. A single leg into another ankle lock. Deuce. Carter smartly smart enough to get towards ready. the rope. Ropes. And once again with that deadlift. Suplex. Seems to me that Deuce has put on just Charging about five forward. pounds of muscle since we last seen him. Oh, I think he was looking for the ball. Let's move driver again. Big oh, pop up. Kick. Hmm. Here he comes. Here he comes. What is Here this? Carter comes. thinking. Carter taking flow. No. He crashes and burns. Sidesteps him. Throws him aside. And into the barricade, crash landing. No bueno for Ace Carter. And Deuce is going to make him pay. He's already been bleeding and now just gets thrown on that apron post. This is the reality of the Anomaly Open Challenge. Deuce is not here for friendly competition. He isn't here for the quote-unquote love of the sport. He's vexed. He feels Carter. like this whole world's got a vendetta against him, and he's going to unleash that, Double -axe handle. That, that vengeful anger on any man who steps within the ring. And he's going to take us to his town. And fellas, Baltimore not again. Baltimore screwdriver. Emphatic. One, two. Oh, he kicked out Eight. that time. Carter again. Whoa, 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 whoa! And hey, Deuce hey, now, I mean, hey! Oh, damn! This sick. Sick, man. The sort fuse. Sort fuse. We know that's what Deuce has. That's, what, that, that's what's been and there, Deuce, pushing him, Deuce, motivating Deuce. him this entire time. <laughs> he tapped. But the ref didn't see it. Oh, shit! He tapped, but he just did to catch him with that. Deuce now going for his plunder. You know, fellas, I think that <laughs> tap might have been playing my games with Ace Carter. He, he's saying, hey, I'm tapping right now. But the scoreboard is not going to show that you got one up on me, rookie. I mean, you saw how quick he got it back up after that. I mean, Deuce is that kind of guy. He wants to get in the head. He wants to mentally break you before he physically does. His head and Ace Carter... Steal. And He's living right now. Well, he just Bell. called the game matchup. Carter ends this with a snap DDT. Finds his way back to his feet. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one more match up on this card. But damn, did we just see the character of the deuce. He is truly unraveling. To put hands on the ref like this is the AWF. He's lost his damn mind. <laughs> And here we have it. We are here at the main event. T 
TI at Crossroads. We have a match months in the making. A rematch. The Mad Dragon gets his second opportunity to dethrone the IWGP US champ here tonight in the main event. Tell us how do we how are we how are we feeling about Dragonov's chances in this one? How are we feeling? Okay. Do you wanna give me do you want do we wanna be honest or do you wanna be uh cordial? Do you do you, do you wanna be do we wanna be sports broadcasters about this? Cause well, I believe that everyone here at this commentary table is a consummate professional. But Ilya Dragunov is the kind of man who will most likely destroy himself before Penta even gets the chance. And this is two out of three falls, which means that there will be, I mean, if it goes down to it, there'll have to be a tiebreaker. One of these men will have to get pinned twice, will have to lay down twice, will have to be submitted twice. These guys, I don't know if you're aware, are not very keen on losing. At all. No, I mean, the way Dragonov. No, none of that. The, the way Dragonov lost his last opportunity against Penta was by a roll up, which surprised a lot of people. Surprised me and you, A, eh? because we expected that match to be violent, to be physical, to be relentless. Everything that Ilya Dragonov and Penta represent, but Penta outsmarted Ilya. But here's the thing, you cannot outsmart the Tsar twice. Eyes of fire. The intensity of the Mad Dragon in the main event of TIF Crossroads. We're going to take you to the style we know best. The longest reigning champion in the Island Wrestling Federation. Penta Zero And he To the ring Walks with the same Chill Composed Aisle He can give a damn that Dragon off Is probably the most fired up he's been in his career The fact Which is saying a lot oh. And, 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 and most certainly so. And, and Penza, to Penza again, this is just another another Sunday on Crossroads. Well, for Penza, he he better start treating it like how this is. This is a big fight feel. I'm getting goosebumps up and down the, on my spine, and and the hairs on my arms are standing up because these two guys. I expect are going to have a classic, not because you know they're gonna apply every hold in the book, they're gonna show you everything there is to know about wrestling. No, they're gonna show will. you everything there is about human will. Because Penta, his only job here tonight is to break, and for Ilya, his only job here tonight is to keep going. I know it's a cliche, and I know it's been said a lot in this wonderful world of violence that we are in, but fellas, a movable object. Versus unstoppable force. That's an incredible analogy. Here we go. For Penta. For Ilya. We have been waiting for this moment. All the training, all the cardio, all the mat work, the coaching from their respective circles has all come down to this moment. The main event here in a sold-out arena, Tokyo, Japan. We will see a historic matchup. Un Basigbar, the Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov, the German-born Russian coming from a working-class family. He never imagined he'd be here. Or maybe he did. And Penta also comes from humble beginnings. But he... <clears throat> and look at that. Saying that he is the man to beat, and he certainly is. He still has champion's advantage. Don't forget, just because it's a two out of three fold match, he has champion's advantage. Ilya must pin or submit Penta to gain a fall in this matchup. Or, or, or to win decisively. If this is a draw, if this ends by count out somehow, P 
Penta still has a championship. <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think we gotta worry about any of those uh, outcomes. <laughs> Smith, astute observation. <laughs> Here we go. Sounds. The most welcome bell I've ever heard. And Penta going straight to work, getting the legs. The quads of Ilya Dragunov, which he works on a lot. I mean, if you ever seen Dragunov have those workout videos on Instagram, I mean, he he trains the legs. The legs are where his explosiveness comes from, and Penta is showing that savagery we talked about before, choking Ilya. Deadlift, German power bomb. I thought he was going for a German there instead. It was a gut wrench power bomb in Ilya now. Ramming the arm into the mat, kip up by Penta. Fast action to start off here. Over the clothesline. Catches a big super kick. Not looking good for Ilya. Rolls out of the ring and Penta! Three sixty. Cross body over the top rope. Into the strong sunset flip power bomb. And then, usually, when a champion is having a, a main event defense, he lets the challenger come to him and he weathers the storm. But Penta has been a raging bull right out of the gate. What do you think the mindset of Penta is here tonight? I think Penta is trying to simply demoralize Dragunov. He knows Dragunov's a tough son of a bitch. He knows Dragunov has every bit of fire, every bit of hate that he does. Oh, in his wrestling style. They're just alike. They're two minds that are just similar. And when you know someone thinks alike to you, and you're as sadistic as Penta, you've got to put an end to it. And there the bat gave way. Penta knows that his title run has been going on for a long, a long time now. Dragunov has been sitting with this hunger for a minute. And any bit, oh man, in the ring. The longer you were in the that ring with Dragunov, I believe the longer it'll play to his strengths here. Oh, big splash. All right, so this one of the back two, Penta. Like he was shooting the half instead. He gets the cross face. Is Ilya Dragunov going to tap? Is Penta going to gain the first fall here tonight? He would have liked to, not to be. That shot taking a skin off of Dragunov into a low kick. Rolls him over. Drain Springboard DDT right on the logo. Center of the ring. Rolls him around. Beautiful neck breaker. Hooks the leg. One, two. Not to be. Penta firmly controlling this matchup. Oh, and you the see this? Bar. Look at this. The arm bar. And I think that's the prelude, A, to the to the arm breaker that Penta has used. Just snapping the arm with his foot. So many men have gone down because of that movement. Dragon we know, oh, that's not good at all. He's holding that arm. He's holding that shoulder. Penta sees that. That might be a big target for a 12 oh, match. Nice power bomb, Penta. Right back up. Made in Japan. Where's the ref? One for one, so three. I propose the Made in Japan, right here in Japan. Penta perhaps playing, you know, a little bit of mind games, performing here for this <laughs> Tokyo crowd, which is hot, hotter than ever, for this IWGP United States Championship main event. Again, folks, thank you for being here and watching TIF Crossroads. I know that we've kept you hanging for a lot, but we are delivering here, at least in my opinion. These two men are delivering, and I think they have a lot more to go. Big right hand. Takes and Neela is straight to the gut. Penta's down. Penta's down. Bad sights. And Neela is calling Bad sights. Penta, this, is, this, is a, this will be the first fall. Big H-bomb. Hooks the leg. Eight bomb. The Sar drops one. the hammer. And Penta out of one. 
Dragunov. Dragunov still showing confidence, but Penta's too big ass drop kick to his He chest. just dropped the confidence right out of him. Sticks him with a power bomb. And uh, let, let's talk about it. In physical attributes, these these two men are so evenly matched. They have about the same amount of agility. The strengths of Dragunov and Penta are, are, are both up there with the best, some of the elite athletes in the world. The stamina, these guys could go for, for hours within the wrestling ring. And back body after Uriah Dragunov, that could be the first fall. No, a kick out of nothing. Penta. Let's go for it again. Made in Japan. It didn't like he's going for the pin cover though. Maybe he knows that's not enough. At least this juncture is a matchup. Top rope for Dragon Off. He just slapped him off. And here's Pent. Oh! The height that he caught. Still I won't be surprised boy. if there's a broken rib cage and or two in a ape when he just smacked his head. At God, Penta, why? Why? He's I'll not tell done. you why. He's I not will tell done. you why. Oh, and again, the back gives way. And Dragunov getting some space, maybe to take a breather after the office for Penta riling up here. This crowd, dragging off, suicide dies. No fall for either of these gentlemen yet. Into a power bomb on the ground. Sitting Senton. And look at the czar riling up his court's people. H-bomb on the outside. Man, look at, look at Dragon. Oh, the way he moves is just... It's like a demon's possessed him. He just, he's like, he's a bat out of hell. On the side. Penta into the ring. Dragon off into the ring. Counts at seven. Dragon off. Oh, my nerves. Dragon off on the top rope. What's, what's he thinking? Breaks the count. You know, you're waiting for Penta to get up. Now, he can gain the first fall here by count out, but the match cannot be won by count out. That second fall has to be a decisive one. Cold breaking backstabber. And Penta regained control of this matchup here. Not a fall. Yet tried the moonsault, couldn't get it. Dragon off scouted it. You know, imagine both these men have watched copious amount of film that they're they're almost sick of each other. Dragon off Penta Thompson into the ring. Went for the clothesline, ducks under. Wildly missed. Went for torpedo Moscow. Still going for it, missed. Dragon might be panicking here, but Penta. He and seems cool, well calm, and collected. Control. We know those tops of Penta echoing through the Tokyo arena. My God. But if anyone, any man can take it, it's Dragon We saw his match with, with Gunther, with Walter, as he, he was once called. I mean. Man, I really wonder which one of these guys is going to go down first. We haven't had a fall yet. I mean, this has been this has been physical. This has been physical. Everything we thought it would be. And Ilya again, he calls for it. H bomb. Could be the first one here. One, two, three. First fall. He is one fall away. The CIF US Championship. And this puts the champion in a very interesting position. Because now if you're the champ, now you gotta be you now you gotta be the aggressor. You can't play defense. 
And you can't right play no. Back and you got to be the cat in the situation. You're right. I mean, Penta is now in the back foot. He's got to put pedal to the metal here. He's got to neutralize the Mad Dragon's momentum into, into the corner. He might just do that. Body couches him. <laughs> Lining Ilya up. Shot to the gut. He's going to go for another third. Made in Japan. One, That's a deep cover two, he has there. Three. Both gentlemen. One fall apiece. The clothesline. It's almost like, a, it's almost like a, a, a kick down the field and somebody returns it for the touchdown. You think you got it, but then you don't. We're back where we started, just in a flash. One oh, one. Both men are drawing. This is how Petty won. This is how Petty won. Two. He's dragging out the first time. Kick out. Chops the skin off a dragon off. And the mad dragon was fighting. That was. Like he was being he suffocated. Like he was being drowned. He, he he definitely was. He does not want to be in that position. Certainly one not in the piece. main event. He's tried so hard. He's waited so long for this. This piece, moment. U.S. title on the line. This Going chance. Up. Oh, oh, oh. And Dragunov with a roll one, up of his own now. He can two. Penta. Penta. One, two. Will Penta have it's it? Still. Oh, no. No. Oh, my goodness. Dragunov what a match. Signing his own warrant. Signing his own death warrant with the roll up he tried. What a match. That was everything we expected it to be. It was physical. It was violent. It was fierce. It was athletic. From two of the top performers, not only in the Island Federation, but on this whole damn planet. But the way it ended. Again, Penta has Ilya's number. He has his number. I mean, K. Smith. That's 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 the crossroads right there. It most certainly is. What a return episode we have had tonight, and we are not going to take our feet off the gas pedal. We're just going to keep on keeping on here in Japan. Thank you for watching, folks. And we do the oh. Oh my god! Oh my god! And dragging off, what are you doing? He's beating the hell what, out of what, him! What what's dragging off do What the hell is going on? The mad dragon has gone mad. He's snapping. Right in front of our very eyes. Beating down. Penta. And this is not the way you handle a loss. I mean, I understand the frustration. Torpedo Moscow. I understand the frustration of having lost two times in a row now in the main event. I mean, a lot of fans in this arena bought tickets just to see this, just to see this match, to see Dragunov be crowned for it to end that way. And Dragunov. But this is not the way you do it. For the road. This is not the grace of a champion. Snatch the Penta now laid out. Dragonov takes his leave. We thank you for watching TIF Crossroads.